so far uh, we have seen the uh, so far we have seen the general iv characteristics for the bjt so uh, we have not made any specific assumptions on whether it's active mode or uh, saturation mode or cutoff mode but we managed to derive the very general expressions for the current voltage characteristic of the bjt and we did this by simply solving the continuity equation and identifying the diffusion currents so now we can take these very general equations and you know make it more specific so let's say we are interested in uh, defining the iv characteristics in active mode operation so how do we go about doing that so what we do is we just make use of the different conditions right so you have an active mode of operation you have the emitter bi uh, based junction as is forward biased and collector based junction is reverse biased uh, which means that we can say that VEB is greater than 0, VCB is going to be less than 0 because it is a PNP uh, device that we have been looking at. So, you have your P, you have your N and you have your P that is your emitter base or P plus uh, emitter base and collector. If my emitter base junction has to be forward biased then my emitter base voltage should be greater than 0. If my collector base junction has to be reverse biased uh, then my collector to base voltage has to be less than 0. So, if that is my positive negative that is positive and negative. So, the moment you make these assumptions watch out for what is happening in to V B and V C B they all appear in terms of exponentials ok. So, the next obvious step is to say that since this is greater than 0 the exponential of q v e b by k t is much much greater than 1 and in the case of v c b less than 0 you can say q v c b by k t by k t is much much less than 1 and so on and so forth ok. So, that is that is the idea so we are going to we are going to make use of these different conditions and identify whether these emitter base voltages and collector base voltages are greater than 0 or less than 0 and then start making start throwing in these assumptions into your equations and you will get a good flavor for what happens in each mode of operation. So, on the other hand for saturation mode you have both of them to be greater than 0 and therefore both the exponents are going to be much greater than 1 and in the case of cutoff uh, the exponents are going to be less than uh, 1 and so on and so forth. So, for active, uh, active mode is something we are particularly interested in because we will uh, later use this for doing circuits. Uh, so, you say that VEB is greater than 0, VCB is less than 0 because it is reverse biased and therefore we have these two assumptions and therefore the emitter current becomes this. So, why did the emitter current become this? The emit if you go back to the general equations what we have done is since exponential of q v e b by k t is much greater than 1 we have ignored the 1 and since exponential of q v c b by k t is much less than 1 we have ignored the exponential term ok. So, which means that uh, that is the emitter current and the collector current will have this dependence right. So, which means So, these are all approximations which means that in active mode of operation the emitter current and collector current are most strongly controlled by the base to emitter voltage or the emitter base voltage ok. In saturation mode ok, so what is the uh, what is the saturation mode of operation? You say that all these exponentials are going to be much greater than 1 and therefore you have all the exponential terms uh, being present here. Okay, and similarly for cutoff uh, we just make use of the fact that all the exponentials are going to be much less than 1 and therefore that is your emitter current that is the collect base current and that is the collector current ok. So, that is there is a negative sign there for the emitter. So, that summarizes you know the three different equations and all this can be plotted off into a nice chart ok where which gives you this IV characteristics of your BJT. You can take this as a homework and try to uh, build this chart for yourself. So, you find that you have the saturation mode of operation here uh, because this is the plot of IC versus VEC 
that is the emitter to collector voltage. So, you have taken, taken into account uh, both the base to emitter voltage as well as the emitter to collector voltage. So, we are plotting the emitter to collector voltage versus uh, the collector current okay. and this is being plotted for different base current values. So, you see that this curve is for base current of 0. So, here my base current is 0 and everything uh, within this region is the cutoff state okay there is no base current flowing and as the base current increases uh, the collector current increases and for large VEC essentially what we are saying is that uh, the emitter base voltage becomes uh, positive and the base collector voltage becomes positive which means that the junction is now uh, reverse biased and therefore, you start having a characteristics of this kind. Now, the inverse active operates like the active, but it is going to be much weaker. The currents are going to be much smaller because we do not have a P plus n junction anymore. Instead, we have a P n junction. So, this is a summary of all the uh, current voltage characteristics and as a homework, you could take this ahead and go and plot it for yourselves and convince yourselves as to what the current voltage characteristics are. Now, so far we have been assuming a very ideal BJT okay? and there are several factors that we sort of ignored or we did not really consider when we derived the current voltage characteristics and some of these factors are listed here. The very first and the very obvious one is recombination in the base. We said that there is no recombination in the base and we very conveniently wrote our uh, what do you say uh, our equation for the holes. Uh, in the n type base okay, we, we conveniently said that that was equal to 0 whereas that is not really true because you do have recombination in the base. So, that is the first non ideality. The second is something called as a base width modulation and we will explain what that is. It is also called as the early effect. Okay. The third is again got to do with the width of the base and something called as a punch through in the BJT. I uh, will talk about that. And the fourth is the avalanche breakdown which we discussed in the case of PN junction diodes, but in this particular case in the case of the BJT it is the reverse heavily reverse bias collector base junction that could cause the, uh, that could experience an avalanche breakdown. And then in the case of the PN junction diode we looked at non idealities like the recombination and generation mechanisms in the depletion region that is valid in the case of the BJT as well and we have ignored that. And finally in the case of the PN junction. Uh, when we built the F equivalent circuit uh, you know we said that there is a depletion capacitance, there is a diode capa resistance and then there is the bulk resistance uh, in forward bias operation which is due to the uh, resistance of the doped regions and the contact uh, and that is another factor that we have ignored in the case of a BJT. So, first let us look at the recombination in the base. So, we had assumed that there is no recombination and therefore, we had gone ahead and used this equation. But in reality this equation is not completely correct. There is a small amount of recombination and therefore, the, the correct differential equation should involve a component like this. Okay. This is similar to the differential equation we used for the collector and the emitter side and therefore, we already know the solution it will have two exponents, uh, but the key here is in the case of the collector and emitter we could get rid of one of the coefficients because of the condition that as x double dash went to infinite or when x dash went to infinite uh, you know the excess carriers became 0. But in this case that is not true because we are talking about the base and therefore, we need to have two boundary conditions of p and b at x equal to 0 and delta p and b at x equal to w. So, we need to have these two boundary conditions and we need to solve these two to get an exact solution. And what is delta p and b at x equal to 0? It is going to be this, it is going to depend on the emitter to base voltage. So, in case that that is not the writing is not clear, it is the emitter to base voltage. And in the case of delta p and b at x equal to w, it is the same term, but it is going to have the collector to base voltage, which is a reverse bias junction. Okay. So, in this case the collector to base voltage is going to be uh, negative which means it is going to be very small and therefore, 
you're going to have a term that actually goes below this uh, particular value. The other non-ideality is something called as a base width modulation. This is quite important from the point of view of circuits and it's got another term it's called as the early effect okay. It's called as the early effect named after the person who discovered it and uh, this particular effect has got a counterpart in MOSFETs. So when we talk about MOSFETs we will discuss something called as the channel length modulation okay. Now both these effects are talking about a phenomena wherein the current, the current through the device in this case it is the collector current is dependent on the collector to emitter voltage or in the case of the MOSFET it will be dependent on the drain to source voltage. We will come to that a little later but the effect of this phenomena on circuits is that it leads to the reduction of the output impedance of your device okay and that, that impacts your amplifier design and the amplifier gain itself okay. So just keep this in mind this is quite important and the, the reason the, the, the idea behind the base width modulation is actually quite simple. So what is the width of the base? So you have let us say here we have taken an NPN device okay and the reason I have taken an NPN device is because this plot corresponds to an NPN device and I have taken I have borrowed this plot from uh, uh, from an online website. So in the case of uh, in the case of a BJT you have your emitter base and collector and you have these depletion regions right you have a depletion width there. So that is the that is the depletion region because of the base emitter and then you have a depletion region because of the base and collector these regions are all depleted. The base width is this region here that is your x equal to 0 to x equal to w so that is the base width. Now the base width has to be less than the depletion uh, the diffusion length of the minority carriers so in this case it has to be less than ln okay. Now the base width clearly depends upon the width of these depletion regions if these depletion regions become wider if they become wider the base width has to decrease uh, and if they are narrower the base width increases. So therefore the width of the base is dependent on the depletion widths which in turn are dependent on the bias voltages. So if I if I make my region here more forward biased then this would decrease and if I make this region more reverse biased then that would increase and therefore essentially we are controlling or modulating the width of the base. So since it is dependent on effectively these two depletion widths uh, the width of the base is quite dependent on the collector to emitter voltage okay. Now ideally in an active mode operation we saw that the collector was not doing anything it was ideally you should have had a collector current uh, that really did not depend too much on the collector voltage. But because of this width modulation you will find that the current does depend on the collector voltage okay it does have a dependence the slope is not uh, not 0 it has got some finite value and therefore this is the true nature of the IB characteristics and by taking a tangent to these lines and projecting them backward you will end up with all of these lines ideally intersecting at a point and this voltage this collector to emitter voltage is called as the early voltage and why does it modulate the collector current because if you go back and look at the expression for the collector current so let us say active mode operation so that is the collector current where is the width you find that the width is there in the denominator right here okay and therefore if the width changes uh, it is going to quite significantly impact the uh, collector current. So that is the base width modulation or the early effect and we will I will refer to this once again when uh, when we discuss the channel length modulation effect in MOSFETs. So they are quite important from the circuits point of view. The third non-ideality is something called as punch through okay so it is not uh, so forgive me for the poor handwriting but this is something called as punch through and what this implies is that is things of it uh, discusses the phenomena when the width of the base starts tending to 0 
okay. So, let us say ideally you have let us say your P and P uh, uh, BJT. So, you have a you have a BJT that looks like that okay. So, that is the base width that is the width of the base. But now as the width of the base starts heading towards 0 probably due to the way we have doped it or due to the geometrical construct or due to the uh, biasing circuit etc. for whatever reason let us say that starts heading to 0 you will end up with a structure like this. So, that becomes your band bending diagram okay. And what happens now is if I further reduce this you know as we start uh, if I as I start approaching W uh, towards 0 we cannot handle these two junctions separately. So, so far we handle the base collector junction base emitter junction separately we solved for all the minority carrier concentrations there we handle the base collector junction separately and solve for everything there and we simply summed up all the currents. So, we cannot do that anymore because now the emitter is directly interacting with the collector because the base width does not exist anymore okay. So, this is the phenomena where uh, you will start having a significant transport of carriers across the base because the width is approaching 0 and this effect is something called as the punch through uh, phenomena. So, but from the point of view of the analysis you cannot these two are electrostatically coupled okay. And finally, the last three points which is the avalanche breakdown in the reverse bias p n junction at the collector base junction the recombination and generation of the depletion and the bulk contact resistance were already discussed in the case of p n junctions and they are the same uh, ideas here. So, what this means is that if you look at the collector base junction you have the base you have the collector. So, in the case of a p n p you have a heavy reverse bias you have a large field if I keep reverse biasing this stronger and stronger the field could get so large that the electrons migrating through this junction could, uh, could have enough energy to uh, create an avalanche of electrons that is pull electrons rip rip the other silicon atoms apart and pull the electrons out of them uh, thereby creating an avalanche of current okay. So, that is that is the breakdown phenomena there. and that is because of the reverse biased collector base junction that you might see in the case of active mode operation. Then recombination and generation in the depletion region. So, once again just in the case of p n junction since you have a depletion region. So, uh, if the depletion if the device is in reverse bias your n p is less than n i square and therefore, this encourages generation. On the other hand if it is forward biased then it n p would be it would encourage recombination mechanisms. And finally, you have the bulk and contact resistance which which you have already discussed which is due to the doped regions and due to the metal semiconductor contacts. But on that note since we will head back to circuits it is useful to talk about an equivalent circuit model or an equivalent circuit representation for a BJT. And we have a simple model for that which is something called as the hybrid pi model. So, if you were to open a textbook and look at an equivalent circuit for a BJT this is what you would see. And you know as I mentioned we are going to start you know the course is going to start having a circuits flavor to it. Okay, and I will just discuss very briefly as to what the different aspects of these models are. Okay, so, this is the ideal model and what we have here is a non ideal. Okay, so, let us focus on the ideal model first. So, what you see here is the BJT has got three terminals you have the base you have the collector and you have the emitter. So, uh, the way we have drawn it here it is probably indicative of a NPN junction, but it does not matter. The base is going to have some resistance some input resistance which means that the control signal for the transistor is going to impact the signal uh, from the collector to the emitter. So, if you head back to our original discussion on what constitutes a transistor you will have an implication of what that you will have an understanding you will appreciate what that means. And your correct your collector to emitter current is dependent on the 
base to emitter voltage okay so let's say that's your vbe okay so this is going to depend linearly on the base to emitter voltage provided we have linearized the circuit which means that these are all small signal equivalent circuits i should have probably mentioned that right at the start okay the so small signal equivalent circuits we have already understood the meaning of small signal which means we are only talking about small fluctuations in vbe vce etc we are not talking about the large applied bias voltages so under these small fluctuations your collector current for example let's say uh, varies with the uh, with the uh, base emitter current so we have already chosen our dc voltages and around these DC voltages we are going to have a small signal fluctuation and that fluctuation is going to impact the current and at this point we can linearize this curve and say that it has got a tangent which has got a slope of gm and therefore my IC is gm times VEB uh, which in turn uh, decides the uh, current between the collector to the emitter. So, that is the message this equivalent circuit is trying to portrait it is all right if you do not understand this now because we will come back to this a little later okay. so that is uh, that is the base to emitter voltage and therefore you have a collector current that is that is gm times uh, the voltage across the base and emitter and gm is something called as a trans conductance of the device okay it is a technical term and r pi Okay, it's the pi has got no special significance. It's simply because of the name of the model. It's called the hybrid pi model, uh, probably because this looks uh, like an inverted Greek alphabet pi. Okay, but uh, but the point is that R pi indicates the uh, uh, input impedance of the BJT. So it's basically dou uh, the DIB by DVEB. So that's my small signal input resistance if I fluctuate VEB of the BJT a little how much of base current do I push in so that is that is the question that is that's determined by R pi now ideally the output impedance of the BJT should ideally be infinite but we already saw that there is an early effect there is a base width modulation and therefore we have a non ideal circuit which has got the R pi it has got the current collector emitter current but it is also got this output impedance which is dou VEC by dou IC. Now since ideally IC was independent of VEC, IC did not depend on VEC and therefore RO was infinite but since IC does depend, in, does depend on VEC a little because of the base width modulation uh, we give a special symbol RO which is the output impedance of the BJT. Okay. And finally, you have R mu which is another non-ideality which is the VEC by dou IB that is how does the collector to emitter voltage impact the base current. Okay. So, again ideally it should be in infinite but in reality uh, you have a finite value for that quite large but finite. So, in that is the that is the summary of the BJT uh, that is uh, that is all we are going to discuss. So, we looked at the geometrical construct, uh, we looked at the device physics uh, and we identified the general IV characteristics and then we looked at the special IV characteristics for the three different regions. It was a lot of derivations uh, uh, not particularly going to be tested in those details but definitely it is an indicator as to how to approach the understanding of the device physics of a device and finally we looked at the equivalent circuit diagram.